Secondly, I'd like to point out that bathroom doors exist. You don't need to be doing something wrong just to not want people to watch it. And I'm sure they even have bathroom doors in the NSA building. Um, so that is the argument for why we think people have a right to crypto. And, you know, we think everybody who wants a bathroom door should have one. And there might be two reasons why you don't have your bathroom door or your crypto. One could be that you don't know, uh, you don't have something that's easy to use, and totally, that's something you guys need to work on. Go away, sort that one out. Um, and the other point is that people don't know what it is. And that is what Cryptris is attempting to uh, address. Um, so it's been done by, as uh, the side project, my friend Leo's PhD thesis, because he's a very clever maths dude. Um, it's been funded by INRIA, um, who are a French uh, computer science agency, developed by various people, um, and sponsorship kindly provided by these guys. I'll talk about it in a second, don't worry. Um, it's open source and runs fully on HTML5, which I'm assured you guys will like. Uh, so, let's see the example of crypto. Someone who needs to, clearly needs to use cryptography is Batman. Um, Batman has many secrets which it is very important that not everybody knows about. Um, I'm sorry, I've lost my place in my notes. One second while I get back to them. Uh, so, um, how does Batman use asymmetric crypto? Well, first he publishes his public key to the cloud. Uh, oh, it's gone again, it's gone again, and it's back again. Um, so, uh, now anyone can encrypt a message to him, um, such as, what are you doing with your nipples, Batman? Uh, you can't see, but seriously, they're lit up in that picture. I don't know what's gone on. Um, they can send him questions. Um, I can send him secret messages using the encryption that Batman's published, and they can... Uh oh, sorry, I've lost my place again. When I said I hadn't rehearsed, I really meant I hadn't rehearsed. I'm so sorry. Um, so they can encrypt the, uh, the public key, and they can send their messages in a uh, garbled form, and then Batman can decrypt them using his own key. Um, if it's intercepted, then it's not a problem, Poison Ivy is screwed because it doesn't make any sense without the private key. Um, and what makes it asymmetric? Batman keeps his key to himself, not everybody gets to use that, and that's necessary because sometimes Mr. Freeze cannot be trusted. Um, then, uh, um, so how does this relate to Tetris? Um, this is an attempt to explain public and private keys in the case of the particular crypto that Leo is working on through Tetris analogy. Uh, you have a public key here, which you can apply to a clear text by dropping it on top of it, and I'll go through the maths more a little bit later. And to decrypt it, you use your private key, and again, drop it. You can rotate it, drop it multiple times, and that's... Um, how we explain the mechanism. In Cryptris, you're put into a kind of fantasy situation where the computer's gone a bit nuts and you need to defend yourself against it through using crypto, but there's also a feature where you can send messages to your friends encrypted in Tetris-like behavior. Um, uh, so when you're playing through the storyline, you're the role of a legitimate receiver. So you have your private key, it's easy to use, it's easy to play Cryptris with. The, um, the, com the evil computer, it has a public key that's hard to use, so um, when he tries to decrypt, um, it's harder for it than it is for you, and you're basically racing to crack this, uh, this code before the computer does. And you can see here that um, the difficulty increases exponentially for the evil computer, which only has access to the crappy public key, whereas yours only increases linearly. So this is a good thing. I should probably say, um, I know you're all at very different levels. For some of you, this is probably really noddy. For some of you, this is probably like, mm. um, so uh, if there's something you don't understand, please just wave your hand and shout at me, um, and I will attempt to sort it out. Um, Um, so, you may be thinking, um, how on earth could you explain cryptography without mentioning prime numbers? Is that not missing out a fairly significant part of it? Um, 
because RSA, the most commonly used encryption protocol, relies fundamentally on them. But this is a different kind of cryptography. It's lattice-based cryptography, um, which uses, um, which definitely has a lot of potential, or so Leo, who researches in lattice-based cryptography, tells me. It's theoretically harder than RSA. Um, it's developed by the academic community, so it's not patented. And it seems to resist, I am told, in a paper that I have not had time to read, and I'm very sorry, um, cracking by quantum computers. And it offers fully homomorphic encryption, which is something that I will talk about a little bit later, but for the moment, if you just put it in your head as like a cool maths thing, that won't be too far wrong. Um, so, how does Cryptris actually represent maths? Well, bricks are the same color pile up when you drop them on top of each other. Bricks of different colors cancel out. And this is basically addition. <laughs> um, but, so here light blue is plus one, dark blue is minus one. But if you look at what's happening in each column, it's addition. But if you had each column representing a different dimension, then that would be a vector. It would be a way of representing a vector. Everyone cool with vectors? I'm glad those people are okay with vectors. I very rarely had a thumbs up for mention of vectors. You guys are fantastic, but uh, I keep one worrying that you're going to catch me out. Um, so, uh, we've got a way of describing vectors uh, with Tetris. Um, where can we go with them? Uh, so, here's an example of how the blocks translate to vectors, which you guys, you know you're cool with, so we don't need to go through this. You can define a lattice with these. Um, and much like in RSA, the multiple um, of the primes is the, multi uh, the mathematical object that you use for encryption. Here, the lattice is the unique mathematical object that you use for encryption. Um, and we can describe that in a condensed form through the Cryptris um, Tetris layout. Um, the keys that we have here are bases, ways of talking about the lattice, groups of vectors that, you know, if you stick them together, make a crystal lattice. Um, and uh, there can be bases that are better or worse than others. So um, we keep our, our good bases for ourselves, we keep them as our private keys, but for our public keys, um, we just chuck bad bases, bases that go all over the place. And what makes them bad other than just, you know, looking kind of ugly? Um, well, first of all, it's easy to go from a good basis to a bad basis. You just kind of add some randomness, and so you end up going in a weirdo direction. But if you want to go from something that's not a straight direction and find a really simple, easy route, then that's difficult. Um, uh, you can think of it as kind of um, having a good map of the lattice, where you can take like regular-sized steps and approach your points in a normal way or having a map where you have to um, take steps that are like two steps forward, three back, and one sideways, where you kind of have to go forward and back to reach the point that you're going for. Um, and these have equivalents in Cryptris. So um, your good basis only has one long column and lots of short columns, and as any Tetris player will know, your problem is when you get these big towers. So here, you can just take out the towers with the column. However, if you've got a bad basis, then you end up with lots of long columns, so when you drop them on here, you might cancel out one of them, but all the other ones add up, and two steps forward, one step back, can't get to the lattice you're looking for. Um, so is Cryptris truly unbreakable? Is it a good form of cryptography? Should you trust it? Well, it's not as good as lattice-based cryptography, the form that it tries to communicate yet. The key size is ridiculously small. It goes up to like 16 columns across, which would only be 16 dimensions. You need 150 dimensions for serious security. Um, it needs to have lots of extra randomness added. Otherwise, it's easy to test if two ciphertexts encrypt the same plain texts. And in Cryptris, the sum of two ciphertexts is a ciphertext of the sum of the messages, um, which those of you who are crypto fans may be thinking, ah, that sounds like a bad idea. Um, but, feech. Um, so, uh, this is a feature of fully homomorphic encryption, which is a really cool mathematical property that I trailed earlier and that I will now talk about slightly more. It basically means that if you have two encrypted objects and you do something with them to each other um, while they're encrypted, then when you take them, uh, then when you decrypt the combination, you'll get the result of doing that operation on them when they were unencrypted. So it's basically like if you took some red paint and some blue paint in the tins and put them next to each other and shook them up and then you took the tins away, it would be purple. You, you can do maths without having to, encrypt, uh, without having to decrypt them, basically. Um, 
And this is a really um, interesting property. Yes, it creates some issues in terms of security, although uh, there are countermeasures, I'm assured. Um, but very useful in some circumstances, such as e-voting. And I particularly think the most important um, application could be in the cloud um, for when you want to uh, store data remotely and also operate on it remotely, but without losing your um, uh, cryptographic security. These results aren't here yet, but new results coming out all the time. Hot tip, keep your eyes out a couple of weeks. Exciting paper on the subject. Um, and I'm really sorry uh, if you wanted to send cryptographic messages to each other via Tetris. Um, Cryptos is only available in French at the moment, hence why I'm working on the internationalization. Um, however, we are currently looking for rich people who want to pay to uh, afford in the internationalization or people to crowdsource the translation. Um, so if you're interested in either of those things, you can talk to us. Um, if you want to play it, you can probably get through most of it um, through just clicking OK. Uh, OK is d'accord in French. Um, and it, particularly if you want to play the arcade modes, if you want to play the story modes, you might have a bit of difficulty. Um, that's the link, bit.ly slash cryptris. Um, or you can help us with uh, improving it. Uh, good luck, guys. Um, have fun with your Tetris-based crypto. Um, now this is where you ask me loads of difficult crypto questions, and I go, I have no idea. I just talk about science. Hello. Difficult question. Uh, no, you do need multiplication for it to be fully homomorphic, um, but there's experimental theoretical proofs that multiplication is possible, and it's a case of working out the details of like how it can be done in an efficient computational manner. But uh, mathematically, it's possible. I'm sorry if that's a bit of a, like, they can do it, they just can't do it sort of answer, but it's the case, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, if people didn't get the question, it was about um, whether uh, fully homomorphic uh, encryption can be enabled with just additive operations, and it can't yet. <laughs> Anyone? Hello, you. <laughs> So the question was about um, explaining the protocols for exchanging public keys and other aspects of crypto systems that aren't just the maths aspects. Um, we don't have that one. Um, it would be really cool to see to see done better. Um, and if it's a problem that you've come up with, you know, maybe we could take a look at it. But I don't know. My feeling as a science communicator, I've been working in this field six years, is that you don't want to load too many things on at once because people get a bit, oh, so many things I don't know. Um, so my feeling is that what would be great is to have this sort of game for the maths and then say, OK, here's another place you can go and find out about, you know, because we basically glossed over the whole cloud, the whole authentication encryption thing. And obviously it is, it is dead important. So I think a p another essential piece done by someone else who's not me. You with the dreads. Um, I was wondering if you could go back and explain to us, I think I might have missed something. What was the um, difference between a good vector and a bad vector? Sure. So the question is uh, a recap of the distinction between a good basis and a bad basis. So it's, it's a set of vectors rather than um, a single vector. Um, so what makes um, a good one is that it's orthogonal, the vectors are short. Um, or if they are long, then only one is long. Um, what makes a bad one is that they're all over the place and all spiky. And the reason that's a problem um, in kind of lay terms is because you can't... Uh, so in terms of um, encryption, what you actually want to do is locate a, a point in relation to the lattice. Um, and if you're trying to locate it with this thing that goes all over the place, um, you're trying to get to that location, but indirectly through a really wiggly path. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a more complicated route that's less um, amenable to the algorithms that are used to locate the point. Um, 
I oh I had the name of the oh, I've forgotten the algorithm. Sorry, <laughs> there is an algorithm. Go bug Leo. Um, anyone else? All right, cheers, guys. <laughs>